Hey, you. Huh? Yeah, you. Your bad audio is turning off your viewers. Oh. This is the ultimate guide to fixing all of that, so you can sound better than even the top 1% on Twitch or YouTube. We cover your terrible mic gain settings, OBS filters, balancing your game and music sound, and so much more. Yeah. Order now for this latest Stream Professor video course on video cassette. Ebelsvox, the Stream Professor here, and it's time to learn you some audios. This video is focusing on the software side of your audio setup. Let's start with gain staging and your microphone. Then we'll get into some secret sauce for managing your background sound and other sources. Every single one of you, yes, even you, Joey, in the back there, every single one of you is setting your gain too high on your audio interface. I probably am on like half of these as well. Many of us learn the hard way that cranking the gain dial to your audio interface all the way up to 11 results in a lot of hiss or added noise floor being added to your audio, which you obviously don't want. It's often commonly believed that audio interfaces need a ceiling higher than 60 decibels to cleanly power a mic like the Shure SM7B or Electrovoice RE20 because you have to set these mics that high. That ain't true. When converting analog audio to digital, you want a lot of headroom in your mic levels so that you don't clip or distort when you get too loud. And I mean, a lot of headroom. The truth is that despite what creators, even such as myself, have taught you in the past, you actually want your audio coming into your PC a little quiet quieter than you might expect. The normal YouTuber or streamer audio chain looks like this. Gain dial set to about 75%, average audio coming in around minus 6 dB. This is fine, you know, at your calm talking voice like I am now. But anytime you get excited or move closer to the mic for a second, it sounds absolutely terrible. By setting your gain this high, you're leaving yourself zero headroom. And when you clip in the preamps, you have no way to recover that in the software. But if I set myself too quiet, how will anyone be able to hear me? you might be asking. I'll show you. Open OBS and look at the mixer section for your microphone input. Turn off any filters you have on it for now so we can get a more clear look at the raw levels and set the mixer slider back to 100% as well or to 0 dB. Start talking at your regular streaming talking voice and then turn down the gain dial on your audio interface until your peaks are sitting around minus 12 to minus 16 dB. This is going to be very low on your gain dial, most likely, especially if you're using a dynamic microphone. I'm not giving exact numbers here because despite common belief, dB values for gain on interfaces are not actually comparable. Different interfaces have different preamps and different quality preamps, and beyond just the preamp stage, they can actually bring in the audio at different voltage levels during the ADC, or analog to digital conversion stage. So you can have the same game number on two different audio interfaces produce two different levels in OBS. Don't stress about specific numbers on your interface so much as the result you get here in OBS. Now that you've got your conversational peaks set, start talking or yelling excitedly, matching what would happen in a stream. If you gained for peaks around minus 12 dB, you might still need to turn it down a bit more if you're still clipping here. Generally, most people won't need more than 14 to 15 dB of headroom, but play with it to find a balance of not being any quieter than minus 16 or minus 18 dB for your talking peaks, but not clipping for your excitement. You want your loudest peaks you can generate to be at, say, minus 3 to minus 4 dB. Obviously, if you absolutely just lose your mind on stream, there will be some clipping at some point, but not for most of it. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to tell you that your quest for gaming and streaming PC hardware is over. Every video, countless viewers rush out to upgrade their streaming PCs or get a new PC for gaming and streaming, only to discover that trying to buy a graphics card online is like trying to get a 4K TV on Black Friday. It's a mess. <laughs> Jawa makes that easy, however. Jawa has some of the best PC builders in the country, building unique, customized PCs that you won't find anywhere else. You can choose a PC based on your budget for optimal price to performance or based on your gaming and streaming needs. Jawa makes it easy upfront with their casual, hardcore, and pro gamer categories. But if you're not sure what you want or you want to fine tune from there, Jawa's team of experts can help recommend the best build for you. Plus, they're super accessible via email or Discord. Or maybe you want to build your own PC instead. Jawa also has great deals on PC parts in their marketplace. Head to the link below and save 10% up to $50 with coupon code EPOSVOX at checkout. No more comments about not being able to find PC components. Find them on Jawa. Once you've found this balance, let's go ahead and add a filter to your mic device here in OBS. Add a gain filter that matches where your conversational peaks live. So if 
you know, it was looking to be around minus 12 dB on average, add 12 dB of gain. If it was minus 16 or minus 18, set it to the positive version of that. By the way, gain is just added volume, so to speak. A little bit different with voltages and analog levels, but it's fine. This will bring your levels back up. A common myth is that having low levels and amplifying digitally will add hiss or noise. This generally isn't true. Digital gain itself is inherently clean and free of added noise. The only time this should really be the case is if your preamp gain is so quiet that your voice is very close in levels to the self noise of your audio hardware, which should never really happen. happen and something else might be wrong if so. Obviously, if we leave it at this, once you start getting loud again, you will be clipping still, just digitally instead of in your preamp. In this sample, I have the gain set too high and I'm clipping in my preamps. Now we're clipping, but we're clipping digitally instead. Probably sounds better than before, but not ideal. We're, we're going to add a limiter here to make sure that you never clip. And I'll explain what that means. But first, if you do have any existing filters you like to use aside from gain, you know, EQ, compression, those kinds of things, those would go here after the gain filter. A compressor will already help do a good job of keeping you from clipping in this scenario, as it takes the all of the audio levels that hit a certain threshold and squishes them down by the ratio you set. This helps even out the louder parts of your speaking to the quieter parts to you know, provide a more consistent sound at the cost of dynamic range and helps keep you from clipping, though it won't guarantee that you won't clip. If you're looking for recommendations on compressor settings, here's what I recommend as just a generic setup. I like a fast attack and slow release, but some might prefer to look a little bit more like this instead. The ratio is how much the loud parts get squished down. 3 to 1 and 4 to 1 are typically considered best for vocals. 4 to 1 is most commonly recommended, but I find myself leaning more towards 3 to 1 these days for a little bit more of a natural sound. The threshold is the level that has to be hit from your voice volume before the compressor actually activates. The lower you set this, the more punchy and over the top your audio will sound as it will compress more of your voice together. The higher you set it, the louder you have to get in order to activate it so it'll sound a little bit more natural. Minus 18 to minus 12 is generally a good range for a passive sound if you're you know, setting it for the threshold without trying to sound like you're on an AM radio. Attack and release are how quickly after your levels hit that threshold before the compressor kicks in and how long after you dip back below that threshold it turns off. I like a long release because I have a pretty, you know, in and out peaky speaking pattern and a slow release helps keep those, those sentences consistent without the compressor turning off and back on over and over. I also like a fast attack just to act quickly, but a slower attack close to maybe 10 milliseconds might sound more natural to you. Leave output gain at zero. We've, we've already gained enough. Let's add your limiter now. A limiter is basically the same as a compressor, only the ratio that it squishes your audio down by dynamically changes based on what's required to keep your audio below the threshold or ceiling that you set. In this case, we basically want our microphone to be as loud as possible without clipping, but we also want to give a tiny bit of headroom to account for the fact that our stream most likely will have other sounds added in the mix. Music, voice chat, system sounds, game sounds, whatever your stream entails. So I tend to set the limiter to minus 2 to minus 3 dB as the threshold to allow for enough headroom overall. In an ideal scenario, OBS would have a master mix or master bus that we could normalize or apply a limiter to for the full audio mix, but currently it does not. The release for the limiter is just like the compressor, how long it holds on to that limit. Minus 50 to minus 60 dB is considered best to keep from having intermittent clipping after it releases, just leaving it on the default minus 60 dB is just fine. And you're done. Leave your mixer slider for your mic at 100% and your mic is set up to sound perfectly. In this sample, I have the gain set too high and I'm clipping in my preamps. Now we're clipping, but we're clipping digitally instead. All right, in this sample, we have reduced our preamp gain, gained back up in OBS, and now we have a compressor set to minus 16 decibels. Now we have the compressor and limiter set up, and it doesn't matter how loud I yell, yell loud, loud, loud I yell, we're not getting past minus 2 dB. Oh yeah, boy. It's worth noting here that if you have an audio interface with built-in processing on a DSP, such as the GoXLR, uh, the Beacon microphone, the PreSonus Revelator line of products, microphones or interfaces, most of this will be managed in your hardware settings. So you just need to set that up in your hardware control panel and then set up, set up the minus one to minus two dB limiter in your mic track on OBS, easy mode. Also, some of you might be thinking, well, this is cool for OBS, but I'm still gonna be super quiet in Zoom, aren't I? And the answer is, Yes, actually. That's why cool interfaces with built-in processing hardware, like the PreSonus or GoXLR boxes, are so useful. 
and or, or why people prefer analog processing chains before the audio even hits their PC, and why devices like the Elgato Wave XLR that let you add VST plugins to basically do all of this before your audio goes to another program are so useful. This is not just a gimmicky streamer tax that many would lead you to believe. It's actual, tangibly useful features. But also, video conferencing apps aren't really made to be that friendly with professional audio gear, so you're better off in many cases just using a headset mic for your calls or meetings anyway, or if you're only going to be doing this kind of conferencing and not streaming with apps like OBS at all, then you can gain stage higher to meet the needs of that application. Just be careful with your peaks. Or look into a hardware channel strip that does some of this before your signal hits your PC. Video on some of these options coming soon. Finally. Alternatively, you could check out VoiceMeter or SteelSeries' new app if you want a software-only solution, but your mileage may vary there. Now, let's move on to the rest of your stream mix. The first step is to consider the different sources your stream may have. Write out a list if you need to think it through. Your voice, of course, but will there be other voices via voice calls, background music, videos you want to be heard, sound effects, game sound? These all need to be balanced to create an enjoyable mix, but also to not overpower your voice. According to the OBS wiki, these are the zones that sounds should live at, but I'm not sure this is the most clearly communicated thing. I'd say that these zones are meant for average levels, not peaks. Average vocal levels being below minus dB is going to be pretty quiet, but having your peaks being limited to minus 4 dB with the previous steps in the video would be just fine. Background sound, such as a music bed, should generally live between minus 28 dB and minus 42 dB, in my experience. That's a pretty big range, but it depends on the type of music. Peaceful, slow music can be tolerated at much louder levels than fast, heavy-hitting tracks like the royalty-free rock music from our backing track music label, for example. Backing track.gg. That heavier music can still be used, you just need to turn it down some more. Game sound and other elements that are part of the the interactive experience of your stream, such as sound effects for stream alerts, or videos that you play in your browser that you're watching with your viewers, those should live in the minus 20 to minus 30 dB range, but usually closer to minus 25-ish, maybe. You probably want these to be clearly audible, but to not muddy up the mix and make it hard to understand you. I have a secret trick for helping this in just a moment. If you have voice chat going, you want those levels to be pretty close in range to your voice, but a few dB lower on average since your squad isn't the focus of your stream, you are. Setting those levels with the sliders here in a, the OBS mixer is fine and dandy. You could also set it with the limiter as well, limiting each source to specific levels that you want them to be at. Totally fine. However, there's some other tricks that we can leverage for smoother results than that. If you're game streaming, you generally want your audience to hear your game. You just don't want it to be overpowering your voice or maybe even your voice chat. Wouldn't it be nice if you could have your game be at a higher volume when you're not talking than when you are talking? Well, you can! For this, we'll be leveraging a technique called auto-ducking, which automatically ducks or lowers the level of a source, in this case our gameplay sound, based on the level of another source, such as your microphone. This is also called side chaining, where you activate the effect of one processing chain based on the activity of another source. Before we set this up, I do need you to do a couple things. First, write down where you have your game sound set at currently, as we're going to change that. Next, have a game open, as you would for a stream, and play around with the mixer levels and raise the game sound to a higher level that you'd be comfortable with it being at for when you're not talking. This might be a fair bit louder than you had it at previously. Now we're ready to set up the audio ducking. Click the settings cog for your game sound source, be it a capture cards, mixer entry, or your desktop audio. Go to filters, click the plus, and add a compressor. Call this mic ducking. Here, we're going to set up normal compression settings for your game sound. The goal here is to squish your game sound back down to the levels you had it at previously. If you want easy settings to copy, copy what I have here. But it's worth noting that the lower you have your slider set to back in the OBS mixer, the lower the ratio you want to set. So, for example, I have my ratio set to 8.5 to 1 because I have my game sound up fairly loud in the slider itself at minus 26 dB. But if you push the slider down to minus 30 to minus 40 dB, then you don't want as high of a ratio, as it won't need pushed quite as, you know, quietly compared to where it's currently at. Similarly, the higher you have your slider set to, the higher ratio you'll want it squished down in order to get more quiet below your voice when you're talking. 
The threshold setting in this context will be the level that your microphone has to reach before it starts lowering your game sound. I have mine set to about minus 28 decibels, as this is where some of my quieter words start showing up, and thus I want to be heard starting at this level. I set a super fast attack, as you want it to start squishing your game sound as soon as you start talking. Setting this slower will result in your first couple words or sounds not really being heard. I set release really slow at about 650 milliseconds, as this allows it to stay quiet for longer to account for pauses in speech without constantly bouncing up and down. A fast release will result in the sound pulsing in between your words in a way that would be really annoying for your viewers to listen to over time. Leave output gain at zero. The last option, the sidechain slash ducking source drop down menu, is where we choose our microphone. This tells the compressor to act based on activity from your microphone source. Choose your mic. Going up the bridge. I'm gonna uh, try to shield pop, shield pop. All right. Uh, uh, yep. He's knocked. All right. He's down. We still got one more. Uh, where's the third? Oh crap! Are they resing? All right. I'm tossing a grenade. Hopefully. Okay. Shield pop. Very. N <laughs> Very nice. Correct. You can use this audio ducking for any background source in your stream. You can use it on multiple sources as well, so you can set it up for game sound, for music, and even videos you have playing. Though you'd probably want different levels for each type of source, so that you, if, if you map them to different audio devices. For example, videos I'm watching with my viewers, I would want to be louder than, you know, on average than my background music, because quiet levels set for game sound or background sound might be a little too quiet for my viewers to really understand the videos we're watching. Background music should generally be set quieter than, say, game sound, for example, because otherwise it's going to compete with your game sound for what viewers can hear, and your viewers want to hear your game first. You probably want to set a very gentle audio ducking compressor with a smaller ratio on your voice chat device as well. That way, your voice chat companions get quieter when you speak, just to make sure that you're front and center for your viewers. Especially handy for those of you who like to talk to your viewers while you are muted in your voice chat, but your voice chat is still audible. Another handy trick is that you can set up multiple ducking compressors on a single source at a time. So you can have your game sound and background music duck both for your voice and your voice chat. So that, you know, Voice chat doesn't get overwhelmed either. Just right click the compressor filter and choose duplicate and then change the ducking source to your voice chat device instead. Of course, I'd recommend adding ducking and maybe a limiter to your stream alerts if you use them as well. Alert sound effects can overwhelm a stream very fast. Outside of ducking and side chaining, you may also want to play around with just generally compressing your game sound or background music sources to help normalize their audio levels a bit since you know, uh, different songs can have different impacts, and games have a wide variety of sound levels based on action. You could also consider an EQ to add a high-pass filter to remove some of the boominess of music or game sound to blend better in your mix. I personally like adding some cassette tape style lo-fi VSTs to my music track without the added noise or hiss feature, because that's just obnoxious, to help it blend better into my mix without being too, you know, boomy and overwhelming. There's a lot you could do. Make it yours. For voice chat, I recommend using a compressor and a limiter, along with turning on loudness normalization in Windows if you have a dedicated audio device for your voice chat output as you know, from the Go XLR, Wave XLR, Beacon Mix Create, and etc., to help even out the different voices and different levels and say Discord or whatever, uh, it, it makes a huge difference. Ultimately, the final step will always be to test, test, and test some more. No amount of specific settings suggestions replace testing things in your environment with your unique setup and seeing what sounds balanced and doesn't clip to you. Use these settings as a guide, but make tweaks based on your needs. Everyone's streams are different. If you're one of those streamers who thinks that clipping and peaking at certain points in your stream is part of your charm or a desirable result or for a specific impact, I'd, I'd strongly urge you to still follow these tips to keep from having true clipping or peaking that wrecks your viewers' ears and instead leverage any of these free distortion VSTs mapped to a hotkey or a vocal command to provide the same effect but better and without breaking speakers. Linked below. Just place these before your final limiter on your microphone filter chain. This is what it sounds like to distort and peak in my preamp rather than with a plug-in. And this is how it sounds with a distortion VST. Don't you know, Mom, don't you know we're trying to play in here? Hello? Hello?
Man. My voice sounds like a guitar now. Beyond that, you are almost fully equipped with the tools and tricks needed to create the most professional and pleasing sounding live stream that your viewers have ever heard. I say almost because software settings can only get you so far. The physical realm with technique, mic positioning, and your environment, those kinds of things matter far more than anything said in this video. So you need to click this video right now, or over here, wherever this video is, to learn to master that side of things as well. Remember, be kind, rewind.